Greetings everyone. Um, today we're gonna learn how to define trigonometric ratios and we're going to know where in the four quadrants are they positive or negative. So given that we have a triangle here, a right angle triangle, we have an angle theta here and then the longest side of the right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse and then the side that is opposite to the angle theta here is the is written as opposite and the side that is directly in contact with that angle is adjacent to it so this ratio of opposite over hypotenuse is called sine and then if we look at adjacent over hypotenuse it's called cosine of theta and then opposite over adjacent is called the tangent of theta so that is what we call trigonometric ratios these three ratios a trigonometric, uh, trigonometric ratios. You just need to know what each of these ratios is called. This one opposite over hypotenuse is called the sine of theta. And then also we can define the trigonometric ratios on a Cartesian plane as well. So let us look at it on a Cartesian plane. And of course, uh, cosine of theta can also be written as cos of theta. Tangent of theta can be written as tan theta. Like there's a um, you can choose to write it in a long vision or shorter vision. And then also, now we have a, um, a Cartesian plane here. We can define the trigonometric ratios on this plane as well, using the values of x, y, and r. So if you look at theta here, and then you want to know what is the sine of theta. The sine of theta is opposite this, this line over the hypotenuse, which is R in this instance. So for you to, to know how to actually remember how to, how to determine trigonometric ratios on a Cartesian plane, I'd suggest that you consider this line as the Y line, and then this line as the X line. So that means that the sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse which would be y over r. So I've actually written them here down for you. Sine of theta, if you're looking at this angle as theta, and then you're saying the sine of theta is the opposite. The opposite is this one, which I suggest it's y and over r. And then the cos of theta must be adjacent. This adjacent line, we've determined it as x. So we have x over the hypotenuse, which is r. So it's x over r. And then the tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. So if you're looking at this angle theta, opposite is this one, which is y, and then over adjacent is this one, which is x. So right now we've learned how to define trigonometric ratios. So if you're looking at it from a triangle's point of view, here it is. This is how we define them on a triangle. And then on a Cartesian plane, uh, this is how uh, we define them as well. This is important to note because this is what we're going to use to determine. Let's say this this is uh, quadrant one, two, three, and four. You will learn how to know whether they are positive or negative using this definition of these ratios. And we're going to soon uh, talk about it. For now, I've just given some examples as to since we've learned how to define trigonometric ratios, if we were given a triangle or a Cartesian plane, would we be able to, to write them down if we required to? So let's just look at some examples. Um, so now here we are given a triangle with the, with the angles beta, theta, and then with the sides A, B, C. We are asked to write down the trigonometric ratios for sine theta. The sine of theta, you're going to have to come here and look at theta. And you see that sine of theta is, is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is B. If you're looking at theta from this point, the opposite is B. And then the hypotenuse is A. So the, for you to know which side is opposite, which one is adjacent, you must always focus on an angle that is required. Because from the sine, from the angle theta, the opposite of, of theta is B, but the opposite of beta 
is C. So when you say opposite, you must also know opposite of what angle. Don't just say an opposite side. You must know a side that is opposite to what? To theta in this case. So that would be what? B over A. And then the tan of B, we come in and look at B and we know that uh, tan is defined as opposite over adjacent. So it would be C over B. And then the cos of theta, we come here and then we say it's, it's what? Um, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is now C over A. And I've also written these answers for you down so that if you couldn't grab what I was saying, you can just look at the solutions just on the next page. But we also need to define them on a Cartesian plane as well. So let's do a similar thing on the Cartesian plane. They say write down the trig ratios for sine of theta. Sine of theta, you have now to remember what is sine of theta when you're looking at a uh, Cartesian plane. It's still the opposite of a hypotenuse, but when you're looking at this, the opposite is this one, which is what? For, it's gonna be uh, y over r. So y is four, and then r is equal to 41. So the sine of theta will be y divided by r. Then the cos of theta will be x divided by r. And this is here as well. Uh, here, cos is x over r, sine is y over r, tan is y over x. So when you are given coordinates, don't get confused. Just remember how you define them. We said tan of theta is what? It's um, opposite of adjacent. If you're looking at this, opposite is this one, which will be the y uh, line, if you remember how we define this. That would be 4 over 5. So I've written these answers for you here if you want to look at them, if you want to write them down. So these are the answers for the ones on a triangle and then the ones on a Cartesian planes. These are the answers as well. So you, the, these are the three things that we learned now. We just learned how to define trigonometric ratios on a Cartesian plane and on a triangle. So now, the last thing that we need to cover for now is uh, to know in which quadrant um, a sine, cosine, tangent, are they positive or negative? So what I've done here, I've drawn uh, a Cartesian plane for you and labeled the quadrant as one, two, three, four. Those ones that I've circled are the ones that are positive on that quadrant. So we now know how to define trigonometric ratios. We know that the sine of theta is y over r. On this quadrant, the y values are positive, the x values are positive, which means that this ratio is a positive number divided by a positive number because r is always positive. And then x over r will also be positive because x is positive, r is positive. Here, y is positive, x is positive on this quadrant. All the um, y values here are positive, all the x values here are positive. So all these ratios are positive. So the sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta on the first quadrant, they are all positive. Now, when we define them on the second quadrant, we can see that the sine of theta is still y over r. Uh, r is always positive. And then on this side, from here, all, all, uh, going to the top, all the y values are positive. So we have y that is positive divided by r that is positive, which gives us a positive sign of theta. And then cos of theta, it's defined as x over r. We have these definitions here. We have these definitions. Um, here are the definitions. I'm just using them. I've just written them here as well. But the reason why they have negative is like, if you're looking at this side, all the x values are negative on this side. So we have cos of theta being a negative x value. If we're on this side, the x would be positive because from this side onwards, the x's are positive. So we have the cos of theta being negative x over r. And then we just remember how, why is it x over r is the definition. Why is it y over r is the definition. 
why is it tan of theta y over x? It's the definition that we used at the top there. The only thing is just for you to remember the signs in each quadrant. On this quadrant, the x is negative. Hence, if you're looking at tan y over x, this x must be negative here. So you can see that cos of theta is negative, tan of theta is negative, while the sine of theta is positive. And this convention goes all the way for the other ones, for these two ones. I can let me just explain this one as well for you to grab it. So we know that sine of theta is y over r. But if you look at this, y is negative on this line from here down going down y is always negative so the sine theta y over r would need to make sure that the y is negative hence the sine of theta is negative here and then tan theta is defined as y over x but let's remember as well that y is negative here so uh, we have negative y over x which means that our tan theta is negative and then uh cos of theta is defined as x over r and this is by definition so just remember how the sine of theta cosine of theta tangent of theta are defined on a cartesian plane that's all that you need to remember and then you'll figure out the signs when you're looking at that definition on a quadrant so here we are looking at this one quadrant four the cos of theta on quadrant four is defined by x over r x is positive r is always positive the radius is always positive we never have a negative radius so um, all these ones that have circles are the positive trigonometric ratios on uh, different uh, quadrants and i've also summarized this as here all the trigonometric ratios are positive only sine is positive only tangent is positive here and only tangent is positive here um, i hope everything was clear uh, please rewatch the video again just to uh, make sure that you know. So now from watching this video, you must know three things. To define trigonometric ratios using a triangle. And the second one, to define trigonometric ratios using uh, a Cartesian plane. And the last one, to know in which quadrants are the trigonometric ratios positive or negative. Thank you guys.